Pop check. Wow, you have totally redeemed yourself. She has the longest neck. She's just been acting different. Big mama. Hmm. Sometimes it's your fault. Hello. They're still your babies. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how old they are. Good morning, you guys. We are sitting at Monday and it is definitely started out as a typical Monday. A little bit of a cluster, not too, too bad, but I have another ewe lamb that is majorly rejecting her lamb. She's the only one that hasn't claimed anything. So we have resorted to the halter because I refuse to lose another ewe lamb due to abandonment. And the lamb's pretty feisty, so she's been trying, but she or he. She's been trying, but uh, hasn't quite found the teat yet. So I'm gonna grab a bottle. This guy is just, I had it up last night. I think it's just stiff because it's been laying down, but it's still really like got a pinched nerve or something on the one side. Kind of got a holder while she's drinking. So I'm gonna grab a bottle, feed it, feed it. Um, and the other ones have already drank. Moms have lots, lots of milk, but here's, uh, this big mama had just a single, but it's a pretty big single. And then this sweet pea had a set of twins and they're doing good. And that's it for today. I think we are getting down to the short strokes here in this first cycle. Oh, look who came to say hi. Hello, good morning. Did you come to say hello on my bad morning? Well, you just turned it around. Can we have a bump check? Oh, beautiful girl. You're such a poser. Hey, bump check, big mama. She's large. Yeah, you. And Mama's actually standing. I mean, she's tied up, but... This is step one in the loving process. So we will take it. Lamb is 50% of your work. You gonna try and get up? That one side. A few of you might ask me, why didn't you try this on those ewes yesterday? And A, I didn't even think about it. I think I was so frustrated and I really needed to get that lamb going. By the time I got back and I washed the lamb off, neither one of those ewes would have been able to smell their scent, which helps with the bonding process. The other reason is I wasn't entirely sure which one uh, the lamb belonged to. And I was just kind of tired and I don't, I don't know why. I'd, I think I just got frustrated and said I wasn't dealing with this. And we have a milk machine, so that does take a little bit of that frustration out, but I do hate I hate it when ewes abandon their babies. It's like, and or even worse, try to beat the you know what out of it. It's just the most frustrating. You get all the way to the finish line, and it's like they want nothing to do with it. But this is this is promising. I do wonder if I'll see uh, the error of my ways when I go to edit this video. But this morning, supposedly there was a little lamb behind 
the claiming pens and the gate. So one of those ewes had another baby. Carissa found it. And she has tried to put it with all the ewes, and none of them would take it. I am wondering if you're with cra Are you with crazy? <laughs> it's so cute. Hello. Do we see if anyone will take you? If not, we will take you. It's been licked off completely. So someone has claimed it, and it ran away. Equally as annoying as being abandoned. Sometimes it's your fault, you lammies. All right, we're gonna go for a tour. I think you had two. I think that's yours. Be nice. Mama. You do have a little brown on you, so it must be. Oh, with, maybe you had triplets, did you? Did you have another one? Nope. Okay, okay. Relax. Alright, what about Psycho? What about you? I have a funny feeling I'm going to have two more bottle babies. <laughs> she actually... This might be her. She, Because she was kind of hanging out here and circling and circling. So maybe it did get around here and she was trying to tell me that. Oh, interesting. She might be smarter than I gave her credit for. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Alright, well, you have totally redeemed yourself, I think. Hmm. She's not as crazy. Have we found our legs yet? Alright, let's try it again. Yeah. I know, Mama. I'm trying to help. That's better. Have we cleaned yet? Oh, did you? I think you did. Good girl. I don't see anything there. Yay. Carissa made a uh, kind of a neat observation with this U. She has the longest neck. If for a U, she kind of looks like a giraffe when she get, gets her head up. Uh, another fun fact on that you see that neck it's crazy you're like a giraffe when I went to tag these lambs yesterday I went on her pedigree to see who her mom was and who her dad was her mom is one of my favorite ewes she was uh, she's a purebred Rito and she was one of the first ones she was actually the second group of ewes that I bought in 2012 2012 so she was uh, her mom was born in 2011 and I think I just shipped her like just this past year she had had I can't remember how many lambs but she was quite old and she was such a sweet you and she looks just like her she has the same face so she's a pure red Rito and she had triplets first time out the gate Chris is feeding the third Very. 
I have to admit today was uh, a lot quicker than it has been the last two days tagging. We only had one ewe uh, lamb, actual lambs. We had two ewe lambs that the one was stillborn and the other one is in the bottle pen. So I do have to tag it still, but I put all its information in yesterday. Uh, they will eventually get put in the pen that's gonna get rebred here in January as long as they uh, look okay and they're dried off okay, then I'll probably just rebreed them. I usually give all my ewe lambs two chances. Sometimes they're just they're just so young. I like to wait till the ewes are around um, 15, 15 months or so before they have their first lamb. My 15 month ewe lambs typically are a little better. Like even this ewe lamb, she has been amazing since I found since Carissa found her lamb and we reconnected them. So sometimes you have to really pay attention to the ewe because even though you're mad at them, sometimes they're trying to tell you something. In her case, she most certainly was trying to tell me something. Perfect. The other thing I did was let a whole bunch of yesterday's ewes out. So these are all the ones I tagged yesterday. And as they get older, we will put these two groups together to give them more room. Uh, I wanted to just keep them in smaller groups so they don't get lost and confused, and then I'll put them together. Uh, and then eventually, I don't know where this is all gonna end and where the second flush is gonna be. There's none really looking interested today. I kind of think Big Mama's acting weird today. I have a feeling. But her udder isn't really developed much. Like, it's not really bright pink. She's just been acting different. Oh. Following me around a little more than she usually does. Hmm. She usually plays a little more hard to get. What's the matter? Huh? Oh, your udder's a little rosy. These two look so much alike. This is like Big Mama's doppelganger. Only she's having two. And Big Mama's having one. Big Mama! Hmm, look how beautiful it is out today. We'll take it, eh? How's he doing? I guess while I have you here, I might as well give you some counts on what we have. We have 129 lambs so far. I don't usually tag the lambs till the day after to make sure everybody's who they're supposed to be with and uh, survive. Uh, 129 lambs out of 60 ewes so far that have lambed, including all the ones that were stillborns or not nursing right now. Uh, I gotta do math because I can't do math. 2.15 uh, lambs per ewe so far, which is good considering we've had quite a few ewe lambs. I bet we are getting into that time where we might hit a, hit a reprieve and then the rest will be the second cycle, but we'll see. I still think this might just blend all into one big crazy lambing. This you is funny. Hello. Every day. She just stands there. Hello. I'm trying to get myself together because I'm hoping I don't fall apart during this whole segment. Uh, I thought it was only right. Um, I finally kind of uh, ripped off the band-aid, so to speak, over on Instagram today. So I thought it was only fitting to uh, finally just fill you guys in on what's been going on around here. I know I've kind of dropped hints here and there, but quite honestly, I couldn't say anything because we didn't know what we were dealing with. It's been really scary since uh, basically our drive home from actually right in the middle of Regina and Winnipeg. It's quite a bit of a drive and it's much longer when you are given bad news halfway through. I'll uh, give a little backstory. Jess has been feeling kind of ill off and on, actually it kind of started a few years ago, um, so she was kind of in sick kids a little bit earlier on. Uh, we thought me, we still don't know if it's related to what just happened, um, but same kind of symptoms. So fast forward to September of this fall, and she kind of had them again, but a lot worse. And uh, Anyway, she just kind of kept it under watch, just kept seeing if it was getting worse and started doing the same things she did like when she was at Sick Kids, what they told her to do there, and uh, it wasn't working. So uh, she finally said, no, I'm booking myself into the doctor. So she, uh, she did all this on her own. She's an adult and responsible, <laughs> and I've I just thank God for that because uh, she downplays a lot of it. I didn't realize 
you just, anyways, when they're adults, it's hard to keep track. Uh, so yeah, she saw the doctor early November. They started running tests on her because it's happened before in the past. So she's had a history. Um, so they ran the same tests that they did before. Um, and that's, that brings us to about, uh, I don't know what day that was, late November. I think the doctors were trying to get a hold of her on the, on the next of kin or the guardian, just they were trying to get a hold of her. Basically they said, uh, can you guys come in tomorrow? We have to discuss the ultrasound and we want to book her in for a CT scan. And I was like, ooh, but I think when she had this issue before at, at, uh, when she got referred to sick kids, I'm pretty sure she had to have a CT scan then too. So part of the reason they called was the ultrasound showed something and they were concerned. And it's like what you don't ever want to hear from a doctor. Uh, and I will say that was the worst day of my life. Your mind automatically just goes to the darkest places it possibly can go. And, and I just, rem I, I, cry I cried. Thank God Mark was driving. Uh, so he kept it together for the both of us, but I cried the whole way to the airport. I cried in the airport. I watched like parents with their little boy and little girl and it reminded me of Jack and Jess and I cried. I got on the plane and I cried. And then somehow that night, uh, because Jess had to come home because we had to go see the doctor the next morning together, um, I pulled myself together and I was able to tell her without being a basket case and she was good about it and then we went to the doctor and then it kind of like oof, okay so ever since then uh up to last thursday when we finally got the, the ct scan we didn't know what we were dealing with so um, my heart goes out to parents with little babies or toddlers or little kids i can't describe what they're feeling at least with jess she's an adult and she could explain her condition and her symptoms and she could do a lot of self-advocating for herself, which is huge. But at the end of the day, you're, they're still your babies. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how old they are. And uh, I've seen parents go through this. Thankfully, uh, you really don't understand what they go through unless you go through it. And it's a different kind of chokehold on your guts and your heart and your head. Uh, last week was rough. Um, so you would have noticed, maybe, in some, some of my vlogs it just looked <laughs> awful, which isn't a feat, because I look pretty ragged and tired when I'm lambing anyway, but uh, it was a lot of emotional drain uh, watching her uh, in pain. She FaceTimed me Tuesday night from school having these waves of pain, and it would last about 15 minutes, and then... Uh, and then she was able to uh, be okay after that. And then I said, if you can get home tomorrow, come home. So she did. She was trying to push through because she's in the middle of exams right now. So she wrote an exam Tuesday, had an attack Tuesday night. Wednesday, she was able to drive home. Wednesday, Wednesday right when she got home, huge attack. She was on the, curled like on the bathroom floor. And I just held her head. I didn't know what to do. Uh, and then Wednesday night I took her into the ER just in our hometown and we were in there for about three hours and they did what they could and she kind of, you actually saw her uh, last, well you saw her last week sometime when she was opening up the advent and that was her last time she had a reprieve of pain and she was in pain from that time on. Thursday night we finally had our CT scan in London at a pretty major hospital and uh, she could barely, she couldn't barely move. She threw up on the way there. And then Mark said, Mark was the one that took her that night. He admitted her into the ER. He waited with her. I think he got home around 3.30 in the morning that day. Uh, I got up at four and did chores. And you guys would have saw that on the video yesterday or whenever you watched it. Um, and then I stayed with her that whole day and she had surgery by three that afternoon. So it was pretty, serious um we think she's out of the woods uh the, su the surgery was successful but her post-op will be in four weeks and then i can really talk to the surgeon and figure out everything but a few kind of serendipitous things that happened that day when i was in the hospital with her and it was the it was one particular moment i won't share it here but um in that moment i knew everything was going to be okay And, uh, anyway, if you have sick kids or have been through this, um, 
I see you. <laughs> and for all the nurses and doctors out there that are working their asses off, God bless you. Um, the way they get treated in those hospitals, and partly it's because people are in pain and people are scared. Some people are just really high. <laughs> uh, and, and even that's because of whatever reason. I just... You're just so underappreciated, and uh, it's a real eye-opener dealing with that whole thing. Because usually I'm the patient, so I'm usually the one that's out, totally out of it. So uh, I was able to kind of witness what sick people go through and what the healthcare system has to put up with. And I'm very thankful for our Canadian health system. And really, when all was said and done, we kind of got that. I had the worst day of my life and the best day of my life in 15 days of each other. So that's the story of our Jess. And uh, she is doing much better today. Yesterday she slept, she couldn't even open her eyes. Yeah, so her surgery was Friday. She came home Saturday morning. And then uh, uh, Sunday was yesterday and she just slept all day. She couldn't even open her eyes. I said to her, it's like she had sandbags on her eyes. She couldn't even open them. And then uh, today she woke up and I'm like, your eyes are bright. And she's like, yeah, I feel pretty good. And, uh, but she's on some, a pretty strict drug regime right now. So she's trying to wean herself off that right now. And uh, she looked good at lunch and she's eating well and doing all the things that she needs to do to recover. So I guess the only thing we're dealing with now is figuring out how to defer exams because the day of her surgery was her big economics exam and and to be truthfully honest, I know damn well she was pushing through so she'd write that exam. So I've been basically most of Friday and this morning trying to figure out who to contact to figure out how to rewrite this exam or write this exam or whatever you want to say. So thank you for your prayers. Thank you for being here, even though you didn't know what you were praying about. <laughs> but uh, that's, that's where we've been. And uh, I think this Christmas is all about family and uh, just really appreciating each other. So thanks for tagging along. Thanks for listening to this. And uh, sorry if it was depressing. <laughs> Let's go see some babies. Bye.